never been more excited to be uh, a shareholder and a, and a part of this company than I am today. The price is very inexpensive at the moment. <laughs> so it's time to get in now. Hi, I'm Veronica Van Wollen, and we're joined today with White Gold Corp. We have Sean Ryan, Chief Technical Advisor, as well as David Onofrio, CEO. How are you guys doing? Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we're doing great. Thanks for having us. Yep, we're excited thank you. to be here. Thank you. Excellent. Well, we're, we're excited to dive into it. So for anyone that doesn't know about White Gold Corp, uh, you're listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange on the venture. You have the ticker symbol WGO. You also have an OTC and a Frankfurt listing. And um, for anyone new to the story, I know you guys are exclusively focusing on exploration of gold in the historic Klondike region in the Yukon. So we're going to get into that. And I know you have two very significant uh you know, backing by Agnico as well as Kinross. So to start off with, let's dive into a summary of the company and then we'll go from there. Perfect. That would be uh, great. And I think that's, you know, the most compelling part of this company. Uh, you know, I've been in this industry for a long time. I've had the good fortune to uh, be invested and involved with some incredible teams and assets uh, throughout the world. And, and, and through that process, you know, when you are successful, you know, it, it really sort of validates why we kind of, uh, you know, put it in, in the time and effort to really try to, you know, find these special uh, uh, opportunities. And, you know, looking back, you sort of say, you know, what did that process look like? And, you know, how can you really, you know, improve your odds of, of you know, creating success in that regard? And, you know, what is that process? You know, you, you find a, a piece of property, hopefully in a good jurisdiction that has some, you know, interesting prospectivity. You, you raise a little bit of early uh, high risk capital, you do some work, you define some targets, you know, maybe the next year you're able to drill it, you come up with something interesting. If things are, if you're really lucky, you, you have a discovery uh, and you raise some more capital, you come back, you maybe can delineate a discovery, delineate a deposit, bring in some real institutional shareholders if you're lucky. And then over the course of what would probably take, you know, seven or eight years, you, you come to realize, you know, the dream of all uh, exploration investors is to either have that uh, asset taken out or, you know, bring in a major to help sort of move it to the next level. And what white gold is, it's all of that. White gold, it, its projects anyways, have had tremendous success over the last decade. White gold is a very new company. We're bringing these assets that have seen all this success back to market and in a very strong gold market. It's actually the perfect storm. And what that's all uh, accumulated to is a flagship deposit, uh, which is just under 2 million ounces, over two grams, open pitable. We attracted and invested through the legacy companies over $100 million. We've been able to attract two major mining companies being Kinross and Agnico as partners. Uh, we've attracted Eric Sprott to be an investor. We're backed by the Power One Group. And we're in a tier one district, the Yukon, Canada, an area that's seen 20 million ounces of gold surface mine placer from, from the creeks over the last you know, 100 years. This was all um, put together by the notorious Sean Ryan. His work in the district has led to two major discoveries, the most recent of which was acquired by Gold Corp for over $500 million. And what we put into white gold now is basically the 80% of the targets in the district, that's 40% of the land area. We're talking about 400,000 hectares, a million acres. Uh, and just to put into context, we, the most, the majority of this has only seen limited surface type exploration. Based on what we've seen, we think there's a very high probability for additional success. This is coming from the people who've had all the success in the district. And to me, it's really like owning the majority of a, of a, of a district, like, like the Abitibi, like Timmins, like some places in Nevada, but right from the very beginning with the backing of this incredible team that we have and the guys that have done it before in the district. I want actually to give Sean the floor here because for anyone who doesn't know, Sean, you bring quite the pedigree to the table. I know you've been responsible for two major discoveries in the last 10 years that were acquired by uh, by major companies and you have one prospector of the year. So Sean, why don't you tell anyone that's new to White Gold kind of your pedigree that you bring to the story here? Well, <clears throat> we've been working this district since, well, since I came up here in the early nineties and the idea was, but we really started prospecting in 96. So the point is, is things take time. 
and the idea is what we really did different uh, that led to all these discoveries is really uh, the science of using soils to hunt these basically. What we're doing is looking for mineralized systems. And the idea is that uh, soils map it out. You don't know where the needle is sometimes yet, but you've got the haystacks marked out. So that's kind of what we've done now. And we've made the discovery of the white that happened back in 2008. Once they started drilling that and Kamenak, the coffee project was 2010. So the idea is that then we found another one, Comstock was another claim block of ours across from the white. And that was uh, another QV, another smaller deposit. But these things started popping up out of the, I used to be a mushroom picker and that's, <laughs> and that's what they're doing. They're starting to pop up. But what the soils led us to do from the science point, why I think I believe, uh, believe in the district, I'm a prospector, but the idea is that we were able to map out with well over 400,000 soils in this big district we know where the mineralized systems are, where the cracks are uh, with the juice that are moving through. Now, we don't, are they economic grades? That's the, that's the challenge to find the needles in the haystack, but we know where these mineralized systems are without a doubt. So the idea now is we're slowly honing in on it and uh, the hunt continues. But realize, like I'm from the Timmins camp and there they're looking for gold 1,500 feet below surface. And here I am out there with these, I call them tulip planters, but they're soil augers. And you could actually see, like you could map these mineralized systems out. So I could still find stuff three feet below surface. Wow. So that's what's kind of unique about the, the Yukon in that way versus you're, you're just selling swamp in, in the Timmins country. It's high value potential swamp, but you can't do too much more as a company and prospector. It costs you a lot of money like to continue on. But here we still can as a prospector. But the fun part about this is we're literally still looking for, you know, it's not going to be one source that produce all this placer gold. Like there was over 20 million ounces, but there's numerous sources. And like, what, so we have, so what I did is I put all my projects into one company, believing that, you know, if you find two or three, there's got to be more. And if you break it up into 10, well, you may have nine, eight to nine losers, but if it's in one company, we should be able, that should be the winner. And so that's what we're up to now is <clears throat> the hunt continues and we're just understanding more and more every year. And that's what the fun part about this is. It's a lot, it's science driven. And that's what a big chunk of this is. So that, that's what we have here, right? Is all eggs in one basket in white gold. Yep. And it's, that challenge was to do like the majors did in the early eighties. That's when I started exploration, which was when you had a super company, a major company, they looked at regional structures. They looked at the airborne geophysics. They looked at the soils. They had teams of that. And that's kind of how I worked with them. And that's what I learned. And so, but nobody's applying that science mm. to a district because they're focused on one property. And right. what we're trying to do is step back and act like a major. And so now that we own the camp, like we, so it's kind of, uh, so this is the opportunity. And if we're lucky, we the high probability of one, won't be surprised that two deposits should be three in there somewhere over the next few years. No, oh, that makes sense. And I want to get into what 2021 has in store, but let's first reflect on 2020. What were the main highlights from last year? Want to jump in, Dave? Or? Sure, yeah. yeah, I'll touch on a, a few things. So 2020 uh, was, a, was a really successful season for us. You know, we're still in the process of receiving our some of the final uh, results and we'll be continuing to release those to the market in the coming uh, weeks and months. Um, a little bit of a smaller program than we've had in the past couple of years, just, you know, with COVID, there was some delays and out of an abundance of caution, we wanted to dial it back, keep the camp size a little smaller, just to sort of manage uh, risk as best as we can. Touch wood, um, you know, we avoided all risk and we're able to do as much as we hoped and uh, a little bit more. Uh, the program in 2020 was divided into sort of... Uh, three buckets you know and that's typically what we do if you look at our portfolio of properties we you know we categorize as our advanced stage stuff this is you know like our golden saddle you know 1.8 million ounces and our other advanced projects uh looking to find opportunities to uh show you know the ability for that deposit to continue to grow as it has you know when we bought that you know the company as we mentioned you know this has all been happening for about 10 years in the district white gold was really only formed in the middle of 2016 so we're still a pretty uh, new company uh, part of that formation was actually buying one of Sean's original discoveries, which Kinross owned, 
uh, and, and taking that over. Well, actually, we didn't buy Kinross rolled that in for their equity interest in White Gold, and they became a 20% shareholder alongside Vegnico, who was one of our initial uh, founding um, funders. And, you know, basically for them, they, they saw the district, you know, they love Canada, they, they did great work, uh, you know, operators in the north, and they needed to be a part of this. And, you know, they, that's how we uh, were able to establish our initial relationship with them. Uh, so that asset there, we bought it three years ago. It was a million ounces. You know, Sean had discovered it. The team that worked on it was part of White Gold. They said, guys, this thing here, there's still a lot of meat that can go on the bone. Let's take, you know, theoretically, we're a project generator, yet we're bringing a project in. But it's just because we knew that we could sort of, within a short period of time, really sort of expand the size of that and the prospectivity. So when it's ready to be sort of moved up, it'll be worth a lot more. And, you know, Fast forward three years, we've got, we've increased the size by about sixty percent. You know, fortunately, we bought it in a, an environment when gold was eleven hundred, gold so over eighteen hundred here. You know, you know, not, 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 we had nothing to do with that, but you know, it's just sort of a, a play on the commodity, which has worked out in our favor. So we've done a tremendous job in increasing the value there, uh, and where it stands now is you know probably in the top decile of uh, you know the pre-development stage assets in Canada. It's just under 1.8 million ounces. It's over two grand. The majority of it's open pit. So that really uh, stands out um, uh, you know, in terms of the assets uh, in Canada. And I think it, you know, it will, it's gotten a lot of attention. Uh, I think it'll con continue to get more and more attention as uh, you know, the M&A uh, activity heats up uh, in the cycle that mm -hmm. we're in here. So, so, so do, you, do you plan on selling off any of your assets or is that part of the plan for 2021? If anyone's looking around and seeing anything that they want to buy, would you spin it off or sell it off? Yeah, so that's the million dollar or multi hundred million dollar question, I guess. Um, we are not, uh, you know, mind builders. Our team, we're explorationists. We have an incredible track record. You alluded to Sean being, you know, prospector of the year. That's one of many of the awards he's won. We built an incredibly uh, accomplished team around Sean. And so we're looking to maximize the value of those assets to a company like us. Now, what does that next step look like? I can't tell you today because I don't know specifically. Obviously, we have two majors as partners. Uh, they've been incredible partners to date. They're, they're, you know, presumably, they could sort of look to take those assets off our hands, advance it to the next level. Uh, they can do that in combination, perhaps, with us as, as a separate spun-out vehicle with a, another group. Uh, you know, so it's a hard answer for me to give you today. The mm -hmm. good news is that, you know, there's certainly it's the right market to do it. And there's a lot of interest and motivation to sort of look to take the, that particular asset for sure to the next level. And I think, you know, th there's a lot of value that can be and will be created for white gold shareholders. You know, yeah. sadly, you know, our, our, where our shares are trading at now values that the deposit itself at about, you know, $35 an ounce. I think the average is probably... Uh, double that, and that's without giving any credit for the balance of this million acres, uh, you know, we discussed earlier. So, uh, you know, certainly um, it's getting attention, and I think, you know, in this environment, uh, you know, we're going to look to take advantage of that, uh, yeah. and obviously do something that's smart for the shareholders. You know, our group, Power One, we're the largest shareholder, along with Sean and the Nico and Kinross. So, you know, we're kind of all aligned here to figure out. Uh, what's going to make the most sense to realize the value. Like I said, this is not some new discovery. We know what's there. We know there's a lot of value. You know, we're pretty sure that this thing could be, you know, a, a robust economic, you know, 100,000 type ounce producer. Uh, you know, we're fortunate to be in a great jurisdiction. The Yukon has uh, been nothing short of exceptionally supportive. They're building roads in our district to help support the advancement of exploration and development. So, you know, all the um, chips are really falling into place to optimize the value of that asset. Yeah. But that was the original, original intent of the company. When you throw all your eggs in one basket is that the idea is once we make like a bona fide good discovery that has legs, then if it's going to cost a heavy lifting to get to the next level, that's when you, you either spin and co or joint venture it out. Got it. And, you know, if we do our, and I look at that as kind of like dividends paying, if you're a white gold holder, shareholder, you know, if you get spin co, basically paper, it's kind of like a dividend. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it over the long run here. Yeah, that's over the long run. I want to focus on today, though, because we are seeing quite a disconnect with the share price. I know you have some analysts um, 
saying that white gold should be at over three dollars. So why, in your opinion, is there such a disconnect in the market cap? I'll tell you my, my suspicion, <laughs> um, you know, going on? having too much going on in a company is a little bit of a double edged sword, right? The story gets a little bit confusing. You know, where are you focusing? Are you trying to develop this thing? Uh, you, you know, in my view, White Gold's effectively four companies combined into one. And I'm pretty confident, you know, based on my involvement in the capital markets exploration space for you know over 15 years now, if these were each listed as their own independent companies, the sum of the value of those companies would certainly be far in excess of the market cap of White Gold right now. Um, so I think partly it's having taken these types of opportunities to really properly articulate the story, allow people to realize the value, uh, be, you know, start to sort of show that we're able to execute on this plan of um, monetizing uh, the value in, 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 in some of these assets. And, you know, I think uh, you know, once we can sort of demonstrate that, maybe perhaps see a little bit of uh, increased activity in the Yukon. If you remember, you know, 10 years ago, it was a, a mad, you know, modern gold rush that slowed down a little bit in 11, 12, 13 when the junior market was uh, depressed. But I think you're starting to see it come back online. Victoria Gold's gone into production. More juniors are heading up there. You know, Newmont's doing some great things on their coffee to projects. So I think we're going to start getting some momentum in that uh, regard as well. Do you, Sean, do you want to add? Like, yeah, like the big part is, is like people don't realize the asset value and that's what we're not given. And that's kind of, that's fine because that's what Dave's talking about. They're just giving it to us. So until we get a Spinco, you know, or a joint venture, but Spinco will be better for everybody. Then the idea is that uh, then people are going to believe, but really what's coming down the pipe is kind of like the Betty project that we have. That was everybody's favorite project when we went into this in, with, in 2016 with White Gold. Well, we were there in 2018 and drilled some 50 meters of one gram plus material. And we haven't been back drilling it yet. So next year, we're going to go in there. But that was everybody's, that's tied on to the Gold Corp or the Newmont project. But we just basically started working another project called Bonanza, right on Bonanza Creek, 6 million ounces of placer. And basically, they're starting to find something at the headwaters, and that's the original stuff they were finding on the Lone Star. But after our work this summer, we're sitting there right behind the dredge, right in prime country, elephant country, and we're just getting ready for to bat. So the whole point is, is like we still, these cards are still coming in. So like I believe in the statistics that there's going to be, you no know, at least one high probability of two or three and maybe more because we're just starting to understand it. So so, but until we get one spin code, because this is what's going to happen, the Betty is if we start hitting some nice stuff on there, well, that within a couple of years will turn into a potential. What are we doing with it? So that's what we're doing as a company. We're trying to figure these cards out. JP Ross coming down the chute is another high quality asset. That's, you know, it's joint venture potential or spin co. So, but these are the kind of projects that we're moving through the pipe. Right. But, the big one will be once we get the first one through, then people will be believers. <laughs> then, what a segue to talk about what um, what investors can anticipate for 2021. So what are those kind of key milestones that are going to you know, make the needle move here that investors can expect? Well, I think the first one is if we basically what we're trying to figure out what to do with this white, because this this Ryan surprise area that we found that we, you know, we've been kind of hitting it a little bit, just a couple of holes a year for the last two years. This year, we went in a little bit. Well, we put, I think, five or six holes. But the idea is that we made, we found a bunch of, I call it, it was kind of blind ore. It was a blind target underneath the cap rock. And that's, from a significance point of view, that's what we needed to see on the white because we've been chasing just basically stuff that's on surface all the time. Now we're proving the district's got more meat to it. And so that's, we got to figure out what we're doing with that asset. But then, like I say, then we have the JP Ross. We're going to look at that because we've set up that for some diamond drill targets. And then we're thinking of next year putting in the queue some diamond drill holes on the Nolan. We've been working up in that part of the world by the 60 mile. We did some shallow holes historically, but we know this is a, a juiced up structure uh, that near vertical. So we're going to chase it with probably a few diamond drill holes on that one. And then we're actually looking at the IND also. So it's uh, not the IND, the dime. 
And the idea is that one, we had some success and we kind of left it, but that's kind of how we've been working. So now we're going to actually go into there with uh, probably a, a small diamond drill program. So the idea is we're going to scatter our kind of cards because this is what we're playing is a probability game and then hit the Betty, the JP Ross, the Nolan and the dime with the diamond drilling. And then we're going to get our, probably our Bonanza and our Heart Mountain target that turned into a fast, like a, about a four kilometer gold anomaly. That's basically, so that's a system and it's a robust system. So we're going to go in and tweak that up with probably some trenching and some rab drilling and get those queued in the queue for 2022. Yeah. So it's, David, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think that's a great summary. You know, everything that we've done, you know, we're identifying sort of multi-kilometer trends. Sean mentioned the Ryan surprise. You know, we had, you know, we did six diamond holes. They all came back with high grade gold this year, you know, 18 gram type material. It remains open in every direction. It's two kilometers from the golden saddle. That's a prime opportunity to increase the ounces there. And some of these other targets, you know, we, we continue to make new high grade discoveries. We're increasing sort of the size of this mineralized trend. And, you know, the more we learn sort of the, the, the more confidence we have in, in our other projects and the, and the more confidence we have to come back and invest to follow up with some, you know, more um, detailed type exploration with the drop diamond drill. So, you know, we've done it every year. Uh, you know, this year was, you know, ex also very successful. And, you know, we're looking forward to follow up on that and hit some of these very highly anticipated uh, properties that we haven't had a chance to do much work on yet. That's exciting. Okay, I know I know it's crazy how quickly time time flies. I feel like we're just uh, scratching the surface here, but I wanna leave it off with, um, I guess the most important question for any new investors looking at the story, why should they invest today? I think now, you know, you, you have a very <laughs> special story. Uh, you know, uh, we're right about to sort of get our planning uh, work and laid out for 2021 program, which will start up in, in the late spring. You know, we're in a very strong gold uh, environment. You have a company here with great assets, great prospects, great shareholders, great team. Uh, you know, a lot of companies say that, but this is proven. It's companies had over $100 million invested. Um, you know, I've actually never been more excited to be uh, a shareholder and a, and a part of this company than I am today. And you got to say that the price is very inexpensive at the moment <laughs> so it's time to get in now you're at the bottom <laughs> white gold corp we had the pleasure of sean ryan as well as david d'onofrio joining us here today white gold is listed on the toronto stock exchange under the venture with the ticker symbol wgo you also have an otc listing and a frankfurt listing thank you so much for joining us thank, thank you and stay tuned i think the best is uh, yet to come